Hey guys, how's it going? Hope everybody's doing well out there today. You know, one of the things that I do anytime I put up a, a, a VPN container to run other containers through to, to obfuscate my traffic and that sort of thing, is I will do a curl and then I will curl ifconfig.io and it will usually return uh, whatever IP I'm connecting to that with, if that makes sense. And well, that's all well and good, but recently, while I was just browsing uh, actually GitHub, I found somebody who had basically made their own version of that. And that's what I wanna show you in this video, is how to set up your own self-hosted uh, clone, if you will, of ifconfig.io. So let's go ahead and jump over to my desktop and take a look at what that looks like. Okay, so this is the web page that you'll get once you've actually deployed your, your setup here via Docker. And of course, right up at the top, we can see what is my IP address. And of course, the, the, the website URL that we're currently on, you'll actually set that in the Docker Compose. We'll take a look at that. Um, below that, it says your connection, your IP address. This is, this is the IP address I currently have. This is running through a VPN. Uh, this is not my, my home's IP address. So it's okay if you see this, I promise, it's okay. Uh, below that, we've got a, a country code. We've got our user agent. Uh, of course, I'm using Chrome there. Uh, the port doesn't really necessarily matter um, because we're not doing any port forward any, or anything like that. I'm using uh, Cloudflare tunnels to have access to this, which may actually be a reason that I'm having some of the issues that I'm having. And we'll talk about that here momentarily. But below that, we've got our language, which of course for me is English. We don't have a referrer here, but if I refresh the page, now we can see that, that I referred myself just by clicking on the URL or uh, the, the home button, the home link up there at the top of the page. Our method is get, our encoding is gzip. Uh, we've got a mime type, we've got a, a forwarded four or x forwarded four. And then below that, we've got some simple curl API stuff so that you can run these different commands in your, in your terminal or whatever the case is that you need to use to get certain bits of information. Now, there's two things that I wanna show here and we're gonna talk about them a little bit. Um, so if I open this up, uh, just my terminal window here, fairly straightforward. I'm just gonna grab this, this curl, copy, paste this in here like so and hit enter. It's gonna throw an error message. And for some reason, I actually need to uh, open up Internet Explorer for the first time. So let's just go ahead and do that. Uh, we're gonna call this Internet Explorer, right? and not Edge, but Internet Explorer for some reason. And then we're just gonna go ahead and let this do its thing. And then I'm gonna look over the camera very briefly. Oops, maybe not. Uh, we're gonna just use recommended settings, that's fine. And then this is fine, I'm gonna close this. And then, there we go. Now everything works. Now, that because all we pulled, or all we asked for was uh, just the standard here, which would just be the IP address. And we can see that right there. Um, if I minimize this and come back, I can do, you know, let's just do like curl all, for instance. I scroll down, oops, paste, slash all. And here we go. And again, everything that we're looking for on this is going to be under the content section. So we've got our country code, our, our encoding, our forward, our host, the host name, the IP, all of that information is listed out here. Um, but again, I ran into that issue where I had to open Internet Explorer for the first time. Uh, apparently there was something in there that needed to load into the system. I am running Windows 10 on a, on a fairly new install uh, that I haven't done a lot with. So if you've already opened Internet Explorer in the past, you probably won't run into that issue, but if you try to run one of these commands and you get something like this curl, can't be parsed because of the Internet Explorer engine isn't available, then you, if you just open it, Internet Explorer, it should fix that issue. Now, the second issue that I've run into in the past while trying to do some testing with this is that, again, let me just come over here and grab this and click copy. We're gonna come back over here to just uh, my, my Proxmox here. I'm gonna paste this in here, I'm gonna do that, and it doesn't send me anything as a response. And I've noticed that I have this particular issue. Uh, basically, any time I try to connect uh, via a Linux setup, right? It seems to work just fine on Windows for some reason. However, um, you know, if I do, let me do this, let me, let me clear my screen. Okay, so now I'm logged into my Synology device, um, or one of my Synology devices anyway, it's irrelevant. But if I do this curl IP, it doesn't return anything. Um, and I know the curl command works, uh, otherwise it would have returned, oops, like that. It, if, if, if curl wasn't installed, it would have thrown an error saying, hey, curl isn't installed. Use this command to install curl. When I tried to install it here, it's like, hey, you didn't give me enough stuff to work with. Use curl help. 
right? So um, I don't know if this is a, a limitation of my system because, or my, my current setup here, let me do this one more time with an IP for instance. So one of the reasons I think that it is Cloudflare giving me some issues with regards uh, to not returning an IP address or any of the other relevant information when I try to, to do a curl command in one of my Linux distros or on one of my containers or whatever, is this, let me let me show you this. What I wanna do is I'm in my, one of my Synology devices, I'm in Portainer, I'm just gonna come over here to the uh, to the command window here, the, the, the container console, I'm gonna click connect, and I'll do curl dot, oops, and then ip.dbtech.dev, and it doesn't return anything. However, if I do curl, uh, and then 192.168.0.180, er, there it is. 18 is the IP address we can see right up here. So that tells me that there's probably something on Cloudflare's end that I have just missed. And if you guys can tell me what that is, I'd love to know. Um, so if you run this through a different reverse proxy, you know, traffic or Nginx proxy manager, caddy, whatever, you probably won't have this issue. But uh, if you run this container through Cloudflare tunnels, you may run into an issue where, uh, where, your, where your Linux containers or your Linux OSs aren't going to return a value. So let me know in the comments if you know what that issue happens to be. So now that we've kind of taken a look at obviously uh, the, the front end, we've taken a look at how we can uh, look at this in, in a curl command and some of the errors we've run into there. Let's take a quick look at the repository, uh, both on, on hub.docker.com and GitHub. And then I'll show you the Docker Compose that we were gonna use, that we will use to actually deploy this. So this is the hub.docker.com page. We can see this was updated just a couple of months ago. Uh, there's a build status thing over here that returns an error message, I think. Uh, yeah, I didn't find it, that's fine. However, it was inspired by ifconfig.me, but designed for per, for pure speed. It can handle 18,000 requests a second while only using 50 megs of RAM. And if I come over to here and I take a look um, at the, oops, not that one, I do that every time. Huh. We're gonna take a look at that one. There we go. Uh, we're using 10.3 uh, megs of RAM uh, with it just idling here. So it uses very, very little as far as resources are concerned. And I absolutely dig that. Uh, we can come over to their to their GitHub repository and take a look and see what's been updated, when when it was last updated, that sort of thing. Um, and then if we scroll all the way down, uh, this I'm not sure what this chart is for or where that's even available from, but it's there somewhere. Anyway, there, we've got some Docker Compose options here for just a basic install. Uh, we can add a host name here. We can add some environmental variables here uh, using an an, uh, an environment variable file or we can do it the lazy way and put it in our Docker Compose, and I'll show you that here momentarily. But down below, we've also got some environment variables that are available. Here's a list of everything that you can put in your environment variable section, whether you do that in your Docker Compose or in an environment variable file. Either, either option is perfectly acceptable. Um, but that's, that's, that's all there is to it, right? There's a version 3.4, our services I have config, our images I have config.io with the tag of latest. We've got our ports at 8080. Uh, by default, uh, I've switched that in mind, but that's up to you how you wanna handle it. And then we've got an environment uh, section here, like I mentioned before, uh, with just the host name in here by default, but there are other things down here at the bottom of the page that you can use for uh, for further configuration based on your needs. Um, so if I come over to my Portainer instance, I'm gonna close this, and I'm gonna go over here to my stacks, I'm gonna look at this, and of course I didn't do it in there because that's how I like to roll. Uh, let's do a nano, uh, oops. Docker Compose.yml. Again, version 3.4, service I have config, our image, our ports. Again, you can see I changed the first half of this to just be port 80, because I didn't need anything to be on port 8080 or anything like that. Our host name is ip.dbtech.dev. And then I've got some forward IP header stuff um, that uh, I, I wanted to try just to see if I had any different results with pulling uh, IP information uh, from a Linux system. I thought maybe that was the issue. It turns out that it wasn't, so I thought I would try it, but that's currently how I'm set up here. Um, but once you've got all of this configured the way you want with the different environment variables that you want, uh, you can then uh, deploy this. You know, you can do Control-O and Enter and Control-X and then Docker, tell you what, let's, I lied, let's do Docker compose up dash D like so, and this, this will pull up. So once everything is up and running, once your Docker container is up and running, you can then of course point your reverse proxy to it and you should end up seeing a page that looks very, very similar to this. So there you go guys, there is a quick and simple method to set up your own ifconfig 
clone so that you don't have to rely on third-party services to get your IP address and that sort of thing. So if you found the video helpful, do me a favor, it would actually mean a lot if you gave the video a thumbs up. If you're interested in this kind of content, of course, there is the subscribe button down below. And if you'd like to support the channel, there are a few different ways that you can do that and actually get something in return. Whether you become a channel member, go over to Patreon or join dbtech.fans, any of those, uh, if you join any of those, you'll get access to my content with no ads in it. That's no baked in ads, that's no sponsored ads, that's no YouTube ads, just no ads, just straight content. So if you're interested in that, links of course will be in the description down below as well. Um, but if you had any questions, comments, ideas, thoughts, uh, any of that, you can always put those in the comment section down below. But with that said, I am gonna go ahead and wrap this up. I wanna thank you for spending a few minutes of your day with me today, and I'll talk to you in the next video.